me and my parents, our philosophy is like, we need to get wins. And I feel sad. I feel more satisfied when I get a win like today than when I get a PR average. PR, I would say. Man, dude, if you if you all ever need like a gourmet meal, send this guy in the kitchen, dude. He's <laughs> cooking dude, fire. He's cooking. That was a great. Was, that was, was a great insane. answer. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Hello and welcome back to the Over Inspected Podcast, the greatest speed cubing podcast in the world. You will see today we have a very special guest. Wait, where are we? What? Whoa, what's happening? Something, something weird is happening. Wait, <laughs> we've, been, we've been transported to a new place, and someone else has been transported to a new place via this big tin thing called an airplane. Maddie. Mm. All right, let's round yeah, of applause. Over inspectors, let's go. All right, so to give some context, we are here in uh, San Diego. We just finished a competition, a very long competition, um, where Maddie actually just won three yes. by three in dramatic fashion. Insert clip here. Um, <laughs> we'll work on that. We'll work on that. We'll yeah, work on that. We'll we'll that'll set, be edited in post. Let's fashion. set the scene a little bit, Maddie. Right. So we definitely want to ask you about this first. So obviously mm -hmm. we're in San Diego. Yes. Um, you know, you won this competition. Um, what was the average you ended up getting of 566? Yes. 566. I think you clinched it on the fourth salt. Yeah, so that was actually my best possible average. And I got it with the 487. Yeah. Which was so epic. It was so <laughs> epic because that was also the only sub five this entire comp, which was kind sure. of surprising That's between true. you and Max. Yeah. That was the only one. How do you think the conditions were like overall? Uh, it was pretty good. Scrambles. Scrambles were decent. I remember there were some really bad ones though, so that kind of threw us off. So that when we got to the good ones, we were kind of out of it. So ah, for sure. Yeah, and I know me, my five twenty in the first round was like a four seven without without my terrible PLL turning, and then Max probably had some of those too. So yeah. sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, by the time that you guys watch um, the podcast, this episode, this will be a little bit dated, but I definitely want to talk about it. Maybe we'll pull it up on the WTO website. But our group, that we were in the same group with you at three. That first scramble had an insane continuation. And then I got a decent solve. I got an eight. I, uh -huh. I said was, there was a yellow line. Yeah, there was. And then, yeah, you said you tried to do a triple X cross. <laughs> sure, tried is the keyword. Tried is oh, the keyword. Oh, wait, wait, yes, this is the one that you DNF'd. Yeah. yeah, it was ah, literally the first yes, three by three solve. Of the, <laughs> it was group two. Yeah. Ah, I remember this. So we can go check it out later. Like you guys can go look on the WCA, but that that scramble was insane. So you, like, you, do you think you could sub for that? If you oh practice? yeah, definitely. So I yeah, and then like I think I might have like overshot a D move or something because the like right before that I weakened my magnet strength on my Q because oh. it was feeling like a little too bumpy for me. So I tightened it one click and then weakened the magnets and then there was like no bumps. Wow. So then I think that might have caused an overshoot and then like. By the time I was done with my, with my first two pairs after I fixed my cross, after I messed it up, it was at like five seconds, I was like, nah, it's not the time right now. Oh, <laughs> I see, I yeah. see. Oh, so it was it DNF? Yeah. Oh, okay. it was just a lost cause. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a lost cause. I see. That's a, But that, yeah, that was a really insane, there were some really insane and insanely bad scrambles <laughs> overall for sure. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of RNG there. But, but of course, we are past that time in the time that we're, we're talking right now or that we're being watched. So um, did we mention that we're the greatest speaking podcast in the world? I did at the jump. So I never forget. It's going to be the second time I mentioned it, but Maddie, thank you for joining us today. Yes, we appreciate no you uh, allowing us to kind of join your pack schedule of competing, <laughs> competing, competing. Yeah, uh, true. It's, all, it's all good. And I'm excited. Yes. Yeah. That's actually the first thing I wanted to talk about. Cause like, I think the most interesting thing about you is how many hobbies you have. Yeah. Um, so, and I just find that it's so, um, and your choice of hobby, I don't know if it's a choice, but yeah. it's so eclectic. You do art, you do yes. golf, you do cubing, you do baseball. Yes. Aside from cubing, because we know that's the case, what's your favorite one? Uh, I would Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally the worst question to ask for someone who's like an enthusiast. Wait, wait, first of all, did, did, we, from best did we miss any? Oh, did we miss any? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, shoot. Right now, I would say golf because I don't paint very much. I only paint during like my school breaks because uh, my sessions are like super long when I paint. They're like five hours at a time. So oh, I don't really have time to do that during school year. Mm -hmm. 
But do, I do have time to golf on the weekend, you know. I think I saw, did you post it to your, your Instagram story or something? Were you golfing like yesterday? Yeah, so like... <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, right? Um, so like in the morning, I went golfing. I went back home, changed straight to the airport, and I'm here now. Oh wow, <laughs> so much in one weekend. Yeah. Wow, I love that intense. dedication. That's what I'm talking that's about, packed schedule. So, like, I gotta get that golf grind, <laughs> and then come here to Q. Dude, but, so me, meanwhile, Chai and I, this summer, we were like, this is the summer of golf. Like, me, <laughs> I Chai and Heidi, we, we, we didn't go to golf. <laughs> I remember you talking about that during like, Heidi's interview, and it's like, oh, there's all these different, like, you know, like golfing parks around San Francisco. Just didn't you know what? Dream big, deliver small, right? No, yeah. It should be the other way around. <laughs> like, yes. like under promise, over deliver. That's yeah, what yeah, it's exactly. To be, but you over promise and under deliver. Under deliver. Hey, it's yeah. just the keepers out. No, I'm joking. Yeah. yeah. You know what we should do? So I signed up. Well, signed up is maybe not the right word. I'm technically a listed delegate for the February Hawaii competition. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming all those courses have rentable clubs, right? Yes, Probably. I think so. We should play. Wait, because I'm, which, which it's going to be on vacation. It's Big Island. I don't it's know. It's Big Island. It's the Big Island, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's so many courses. So places. the thing is, like, I actually, when I do competitions, I don't usually plan it as a vacation. Like, this uh -huh. one is just, like, an extra day off. But that one, I have a good week off. Yeah, no, there's, like, so many so places. So we should, I think we'll definitely play during that time. Yes. The courses are very good. Well, you should, will you have, have to do it on a separate <laughs> week. That's the thing. Because we're not going to be lined up. Unless you could be lined up. Yeah, but what if it could be any weekend? Oh, uh, I mean, yeah, but I guess that's up to you at that point. Would you say that you're... Like let's say, I don't, I, a lot of people are not gonna understand what like handicaps are. So like, even I don't really understand what handicaps yeah. are. But like, a scratch golfer is basically Zero, like, right? a, like a college level golfer. A yeah. pro college level, an amateur college level golfer. So how close or far away are you? from that level, because I will say you got a nasty swing. <laughs> you got a nasty so, swing. I'm a three on the handicap index, although okay. I would say my ball striking is a little bit better than that, and my putting is a little bit worse than that. Oh, <laughs> putting, yeah. putting is the, uh, yeah, so like the my, one. My swing is kind of is kind of pure for my handicap, and then my putting, especially like, I don't know, just my putting in general is like kind of mid. <laughs> okay. Would you say you yeah. three putt more than you would like to? Yes. Yeah. yeah Putting so is where everyone kind of gets messed up. Yeah. So is, fair enough. is three like slightly worse than zero or slightly better? Than slightly worse. Slightly, slightly worse. worse. Okay. So well, it's, like, it's like three it's strokes. Yeah. Worse. But you're also like yeah. not in college. Yet, so it's, <laughs> it's like, like it's you like, a lot of times. If the course is like a, a par 72, so the par is 72 and then the course is playing standard, which means it's not easy or hard, then on average I'll shoot a 75. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's insane in my opinion, because like I'm like what like 35 handicaps so yeah. it's not even close. Yeah. It's, it's like a 10 to 1 ratio. Yeah. 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 So that's interesting. You say that like, you know, during the school year you don't really have time to like paint and stuff like that. But I also know when you're out of school year, that's when you're focusing on QB. Yeah. So it definitely sounds like you're I, I wouldn't say put put a step back, but you're starting to prioritize it since school is so important right yeah probably yeah. i mean i kind of been cubing like i've been cubing more actually previous than previously like just during school like when i come i've been getting better at like doing homework like at school because my school we have like a free period which is basically because we have eight scheduled i mean seven scheduled class periods over two days and then one of them is always like a free period that we can like do stuff so i do my work there which gives me like that extra time to keep whenever i want for sure yeah so that's yeah I, I think that's, that's smart it's like leave school for like that's where you do your school work. Yeah, yeah yeah and of course i have stuff to do at home too but it's a lot less because of that period okay right pretty solid uh i'm kind of curious i guess like um with like recently, we've had kind of like this chain of like major competitions that have kind of happened back to back to back. Have you like experienced that before? No, it's kind I've of never. intense, right? Oh, but do you feel it? Like, I I don't know. I didn't really. I kind of got desensitized to the nerves by the time Worlds came. Like at Canadians, I was like pretty nervous, and then at Nats, it was like. Okay, the crew battle final solve would be ah. the greatest nerves I've ever felt in my life. So then after that, it was like, oh, nothing can be worse than that. <laughs> so I, then, there you go, yeah. So then, 
Like I never got above a 6.5 for Nats and Worlds Finals because I had no nerves. But then I wasn't focused enough to get good times too mm. because of my lack of nerves, which is kind of like a weird thing. Oh, that's so like an odd like, catch point. Yeah. So, so you think the nerves are like high risk, high reward, where it's like yeah. if they like move you in the right direction, you can actually get a uh, faster song. Uh -huh. Like you, for me, the, everybody had their nerves work differently. But for me especially, I can get like insanely fast times under pressure or like really bad times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but sure. then when I'm not under pressure, I just get like mad times, you know? Do you, right. I think part of what Manu was asking as well is do you think, maybe it doesn't feel that way, but do you have any preference towards feeling like it's championship season? Like we're in season for keeping your right, feel as like opposed to just like big comp, big comp, big comp. But I feel like for you, it could be different sensations because you have to commute from Hawaii. Yeah, right. pretty much. I mean, over the past few years, I've only, except for like these rare San Francisco and LA comps, I I don't really go anywhere other than like championships, like yeah, like North American championships last summer, and then during the actual year other than summer, like Japan championships. Yeah, I used to go to those. They oh, don't yeah. have those. Twenty nineteen. Right? Yeah, yeah. So 2017, 2018, 2019, I went to those. They don't have them anymore. No. Yeah, the Japan. Okay, if anybody, if anybody from Japan is watching this, make a move. Because, oh, <laughs> their, or, their organization is like. Pretty, oh god, it's pretty like lacking. it's uh, basically like an inactive organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can definitely like be an issue. It is a very yeah. big issue, and I know so many people who want to go to comps, but for some reason they're not making them. So oh, yeah, interesting. I see. That's what's happening, everybody. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. This is a good time to ask then, or it's not really an ask, but it's just like a, I guess a statement rather. So. For all intents and purposes, you're probably like top two or three US cuber, like in, in the entire United States of America. But the problem <laughs> is we can't go to competitions. Yeah. So like, do you feel like that actually inhibits your results? Or is it just something where it inhibits your joy from it? No, I would say, I mean, obviously my, my PRs would be a lot better. If you I think so? It makes sense, yeah. You know, the interesting thing yeah. is Luke Garrett has gotten some more comps this year than I have in my entire career. Oh, really? Oh, wait, God. really? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> so wait, how many? So I I forget the number, but previous to this competition, he went to like like 40X and I went to one one or two less than that in my seven years of TV. Do you know who else has done, got, like, done that many in this year? Who? Chris Martin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, he's going, he's going yeah. I just checked his comp list, he's at 170. Yeah. Dude, no, he's, what? No, 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 like he's, half of that is Hawaii. Dude, he's, he's <laughs> not, he's not, Hawaii, dude it's crazy. He's on a current stretch of like 21 competitions in 13 weekends or something. Oh, wow. So he's like, he's uh, doing more than one a week. He, New England Championships this week, Great Lakes later. So really, so Luke Garrett did 40 something comps. Yeah, and that's not really an excuse for, because other people improve too, but I would say for me, it's like an excuse because I've had less chances. I mean, just literally less you literally, yeah. well, You so, can look so at the so completed the, solve section. The statistics of me getting a good time in competition are a lot less than people who go to more comps, basically. Yeah. yeah. Wait, is it just because like the Northwest just doesn't have as much of an organizational team as California. Oh, not the North, because he does. He goes to Pacific Northwest comps, but he's oh, okay. in Hawaii. Oh, oh, you're in Hawaii. Yeah, 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 it, oh, yeah, yeah legit. Yeah. That's the whole. Oh, thing. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> but no, 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 no You did go to a lot of PNW. You're you're good friends with them, right? Like Samir Max. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, that's probably why. That was like my original, my original friend group. I thought you were from the PNW at first, but yeah. uh, very quickly. I caught on to the to the <laughs> to the, the whole Hawaii right? thing. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I was I was watching the vlogs too, yeah. and I thought that was pretty cool. But you happened to vlog the PNW comps a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah, not a lot of competitions for you. Not a lot of completed solves, but you are definitely like one of the most touted keepers out there, the North American champ. Up until twenty twenty four, we don't know what happened. Yeah, true, yes. true. The reigning North American champ. Um, sure. But yeah, I, I'm excited to see you kind of add more competitions to your list because it seems like 
it's kind of going well. Dude, in case you didn't know, Chai's your number one fan. <laughs> like, oh. Like, Chai, like, could, like, yeah, not yeah, wait, wait, no, hold on. Hold on. Like, <laughs> like, who's gonna win Worlds? Who's gonna win? Nah, I, 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 I watched that video. Yeah, every oh, single prediction. It's, wait, I don't know. Like, what is it like when, when like, the person being said, like, watches the actual video? How does it make them feel? Oh, like, yeah. yeah. Probably probably good, I just right? gotta I gotta believe in my boy. It feels, it feels good. And then, like, you run in the comments, like, Maddie Hirota Inaba, like, like well, with a period in between, it's so funny. Like, Maddie Hirota Inaba. Here's, yeah, yeah. Here, here's a lesson in being, like, a, a decent human being, right? So, like, you gotta, you gotta believe in the people that you believe in, and you gotta, like, support your people that you support, right? Facts, you gotta facts. stay loyal to the soil. You know? Yo! Yeah, so, like, so here's the thing, like, on an objective level, yeah, like, Maddie wouldn't also tell himself that he's the objective favorite. Yeah. But if he's got a chance, I'm gonna root for my boy. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can find it. I gotta root for my boy. Like, yeah, like, I'm not flooded with money, but yeah, I'll throw a couple bucks in there if it's a, <laughs> if it's a thing. Like, but it's not a thing, right? Yeah. But all that, like, betting pools for huge. Yeah, but it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't well, exist. Maybe that's the next scary. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I know, I know like gambling is okay, not okay. good. No, no. Jerry's gonna get gambling cut, is dude. not good, guys. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Not good. But I but, guess, uh, you know, friendly wagers, right? Yeah. yeah true. As a bit of an aside, I feel like, when did you feel like you were first, like, really, like, really, really, really going on to the scene? I want to say kind of like keeping at home. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Because up till then, well, I did the three P Japan Championships before then. In 3x3, I won 2017, 2018, 2019. So that was like fire. So good. Yeah, and in, in 2017, I feel like I had my first good solve, which was my 5.58 single, which was ranked. Wow, 5.58 single. It was like, back in 2017? Yeah, it was ranked like 20 something in the world back yeah, wow. then. So that was like my first taste of like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm kind of good. <laughs> so and then I won those. And then like, I was kind of just kind of hanging there. And then Keeping at Home came. And I got to compete with guys like, like Felix. Max Shaw, Timo, mm -hmm. you know, Leo. Yeah. Too many names to count. And like and since I never got to compete with them ever, I got to compete with them so often then that I kinda like knew what I needed to work on to beat them, which made me faster. So basically like seeing them how they solve what mistakes they made in their past and against me, I use those to learn from them and say, oh, I'm not going to do that again, or oh, I need to do what okay, they do. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. Learnings. Right, yeah. Ac actually, so for keeping at home, that's kind of like, actually, yeah, so that's a good point. I feel like your cubing career from an outsider looking in was that the inflection point was corny, mm -hmm. more or less. Did you, personally for me, and you can elaborate this as much as you want through like competitive formatting, mm -hmm. keeping at home or monthly? Cause that's Ooh, I feel like you you got big off Monkey League personally. I would say Monkey League because it's three by three oriented, and that's like okay, by yeah. far my favorite event. Sure. Yeah. yeah, and like I would say yeah, Monkey League I got better more than cubing at home because there were more solves, so I could have more makes sense experience. Right. And yeah. Then, and then it's just one on one the whole time, head to head finals. So that's like good training. Stuff. Right, the yeah. actual head to head finals. Monkey League has some of the best advertising for what Speed Cubing can be. Totally. Yeah, like, yeah, if you look totally. at the views at it now, like, if I'm Joe Schmo seeing what, <laughs> what is Speed Cubing. Yeah. yeah. And, like, um, yeah, like, all those videos got hella views. And, like, the highlights, the Monkey League highlights, some of them, like, two of mine got, like, over a million views for no apparent Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just somehow, yeah. like, it just does well. Yeah. Well, I think like Laser Monkey already had like a well-established channel, and it just was like riding that momentum. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if Cubing at Home had a YouTube channel, but like it wasn't. Mm, no, it didn't. It, was, it, it like started from Facebook. fresh. Okay, I see. It started fresh because yeah. I, I they didn't use like the Cubicle YouTube channel. I don't think they used Cubing USA YouTube channel. I think it was a fresh YouTube channel. Oh, I mean, it was still good. Cubing at Home was great. Like, but I definitely think that Monkey League is. Well, I think you showed like truly like how much you improved. Yeah, I also remember like there was one monkey league where uh, like Philip is always just saying like, and Maddie leaves the door wide open, <laughs> and then you actually went to your door. That's, and that's the one. That's <laughs> oh wait, that's like, hilarious! Wait, you actually did that? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh door. yes! And wait, I, I don't remember this. So, yeah. it's so, like, I remember. <laughs> I like that's such a good thing because like it like it humanizes you. Like because suddenly, I was like watching the. One of the streams, and like it was somebody in the chat or some or Philip even said, he's like, 
what if he opens the door when I say this one day? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like next match when I drop a drop an absolute like trash solve, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> oh, that's so idea. funny. Yeah. Wait, so you you basically called it? You called that? He like he was gonna say it? Yeah, 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 I, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, he said, said it. Yeah, yeah. I that's so that. boss mode, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I feel like he says it so much that you can predict when it's coming, right? Yeah. It's like, like it's, you, like, it's like Chide when he says uh, that's how the cookie crumbles, dude. I or like I do say that a lot. Or let me say like sidebar, you know. We all, we all have our own pet phrases. Have you ever heard of the phrase sidebar? I actually, I have not. <laughs> I will say, I'm starting to hear it more. Like, it's not Yeah, yeah, you. it's weird. I'm hearing it more now. Yeah. Oh, so I'm like, not- Like, I'm hearing it like normal, like, it, like I'll listen to a different podcast and they'll say like, sorry, I'm gonna go on the sidebar or whatever. Okay, so just to, to define, you know the definition of sidebar? Basically, it's, it's a going tangent. on a tangent. Okay, okay, yeah. You've never heard that? No, I They didn't heard hear it, of it and yeah. they were making fun of me. I thought it was side note. Yeah, but, that's what I thought too. Yeah. I never heard the bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I it's swear, bar out of nowhere. I swear I'm hearing it, but I'm maybe you were just ascended, dude. Maybe <laughs> maybe you're a trendsetter. Like maybe you're the first. And yeah, it's more. It's just like incepted in your mind. Yeah, I don't know. Oh man, <laughs> that was kind of weird. Oh. Right, enough of this sidebar, sidebar. All right, all right. Back, sidebar about sidebar. Back to Maddie's story. <laughs> well, one thing I was gonna ask you was, you were saying that like during Monkey League, it felt like very one on one with the mm-hmm. other competitor. Would you? like have conversations with them after the competition had ended yeah well like before and after like especially with me and leo before and after we actually did the matches we had like other matches on like oh on like let's cube we would do like oh average, like, like, like right. averages of 100 oh. like before and after the actual match oh. that's where like, they would talk about like i think like philip would say like they got a three off straight yes like yes. stuff like that yeah, yeah so yeah. then philip all the judges and like, you know, all the boys were there in the call and they were just watching us <laughs> just doing it for like an hour before the match. We would do the match and then we do some more after just for fun. Oh so my goodness. So it wasn't insane. as structured as one would think. No. It was just this yeah. giant, giant play session. Basically. It's yes. a play date, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it like, kind of helps like lower the pressure a bit because mm-hmm. you're so used to competing with this guy now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we got very close to everybody like over the course of the competition. Yeah, so like, like none of us had beef, so it's kind of weird like to compete against one another so closely. Like it's like it's your close friends like that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so I think true. I think that's one of the pluses of the Cuban community also because I think if it were like other like if it were like melee for example, then I think it would come toxic pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. But I think like with cubing, it's more like how can we all like build each other up and how can we all help each other get better. So yeah. I wonder. So I wonder what part of that. So you know how cubing there isn't really this like head to head. Component. Like, of course, we do head-to-head finals once in a while, but I wonder if that sensation comes, like, the difference from, like, cubing versus smash is related to maybe cubers aren't able to really affect the other cuber, and therefore it's, like, well-played sir, you beat me kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. know. There like, are certainly is it? mind games that you can play. In mind. I guess theoretically say, speaking, you could like, like be a little bit devilish. I know, I know, I know some people who like who like to come up to me and like try my cube and say like, oh, this is trash. <laughs> oh, oh, really? Oh, I guess okay. Hold on, hold on. Well, you well, definitely don't have to. Like, used to get to me. Okay. We don't have to expose people. But well, yeah, that's a thing. Unnamed like, person. No. Just oh, say the initials. Okay. No. I tried somebody in the top level. This definitely happens. Like really that stuff. Just very subtle things that people try and That's do. That's crazy. Oh, Especially wow. in the green room, before head-to-head finals, all kinds of stuff happens that nobody knows about. Like, oh wow. Oh, like people. Wait, we're changing this to the dark side of. Keep yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. The dark, the dark side, side of North American Championships. Oh, my God. What did Mighty have yeah. to overcome? <laughs> Some people they try and they try and get in your head saying. They try and watch you like while you're warming up, try and point out flaws and stuff. Really, it's really hard to get that out of your head. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's yeah. like the real tough part of being the head-to-head final. Mm-hmm. The format is like so different, where yeah. it's like because you're just sitting in the re- green room, you're just cooking, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, just like yeah. you're just like thinking there with your thoughts and whatnot. Oh, okay. North American green room was way different than any, anything else because we were literally. Every single one of us were friends, so we were like doing like relays and stuff. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> so that, that one was was pretty great. That was a great competition. Oh, yeah, wow. it was. It was yeah. Shout out to the Speak Cubing Canada. Oh, man, dude, I'm sad I missed out. I should have gone. Oh, the one in Toronto. <laughs> you did. Yeah, uh, it was a great. Yeah. Comp. Legitimately, it was a great. Comp. It was great. one of. It was the competition that inspired me to stick in the Cubing. Mm-hmm. Oh, you. I was. The, I said. Yeah, that that sounds about right. I was on the edge. 
I had, at that point, I was like almost tapped out. And then that comp kind of like brought me back in. It was great, like Rubik sponsoring stuff. That was one of the first continental championships from Rubik, I think. I'm trying to think of the only other time they did it. Do you think they did it for 2018 Euros? Euros? No, right? Well, that's, well, yeah, that's so the flat. 2022 Euros, I I can't remember. I don't know. Time, and then they like introduced the perpetual trail print stuff, which was a great addition to the Cuban community. Because yes. I don't think we've had one of those. That's, yeah, the I thought perpetual, I thought that was So yeah. what, the it? perpetual trophy, I don't know exactly where the idea came from, but I believe it was an Ethan Pride card. So. Hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think it's a genius idea. Yeah. Wait, is it kind of like that belt in like wrestling where it's like it hands off from person? I think it's person. kind of, uh, sort of a like better a one. It's kind of like the Wanamaker trophy or something. Yeah, like right. a better one is like the NBA, like Larry O'Brien. Like no one actually owns it, the team does, but it kind of, doesn't it swap hands? And I think like, I don't know exactly how the NAC one works, but like, do it's like a little plaque or do they like engrave it on? I think, yeah, the, the way it looked was they're going to engrave it onto a little piece of metal. And, like, World is so, okay, so like mini, mini plaques. Yeah, exactly. yeah, mini yeah, plaques yeah. that you add, like this is 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 26. It kind of like has like the whole history there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, so, I think like a lot of other sports do this. The main one I think of is golf. Yeah. You know, I think the yeah. Wanamaker Trophy, right? Uh -huh. um, but yeah, a lot of other sports do it. And I think it gives like a little bit more street cred. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's legit. We have a cool trophy. Here. I guess it's also <laughs> a feeling of like even a hundred years from now, your name will still be there for 2020. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just one. like, yeah, that's just like the archive stuff. That's just yeah. like, um, you know, when you go to Pebble Beach and you see that entire wall mm -hmm. of like, you know, you yeah. see Tiger Woods statue. It's yeah. just, it's just cool. I yeah. think at the end of the day, it's a cool. statue. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Well, there are no cuper statues yet. Would you want a statue? Maybe? Not really. <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't want a statue myself. It seems yeah, a little bit self. I don't know what so pose I would do. Too. It's, I'm not going to lie. I would feel uncomfortable with a statue of myself. <laughs> well, yeah, it would be kind of awful. Have you seen that one of like Cristiano Ronaldo that looks really like- Yeah, <laughs> that, that was yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one is such a terrible yeah. one. That one has got to be one of the worst ones. Yeah. So if that happens to a Cuber, like, it's going to ruin the reputation. Ooh, I got rapid fire. Because you're talking about, um, you're talking about soccer, football, sorry. You're talking about, you're yeah. talking about soccer. Yeah. So, rapid fire. American football or football? Uh, let's see. Uh, basketball or football? Basketball. Basketball or golf? Golf. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes oh. sense. Golf that's or cubing? No, no, no. Golf or tennis? Golf. Very <laughs> I, I think golf is good. I'm liking where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Golf is just so great. Like you just oh, baseball. The, the courses are good. Baseball. Yeah. Golf. Oh, you know wow. what I like about golf? Nice. Golf is even though it's like a mental like block but it's also the most mental and terrifying one. Yeah, if you can. And then like, it's so, it's like super satisfying when you like, hit a good shot, when you make a putt, and like, when you hit a bad shot, it's super satisfying when you hit like a good recovery shot. There's like so many things. Yeah, and I feel like the other thing is like, I feel like if you suck at golf, then you have no one to play but yourself. <laughs> like, like, oh, like, yeah. like you just suck, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, and, and if you do well, it's not like, it's, it's really like, oh, like the opponent was just throwing or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, like you did well. Yes. Do you see parallels in keeping in golf? Because I do. That's oh, oh yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. you know the crazy thing? I read uh, a golf psychology book before North American Championships, which helped me. Did you? Wow. Like, really, it legitimately, like, yeah. kind of like, oh. It was, it was by Bob Rotella. It was called How to Make Your Next Shot Your Best Shot. I think <laughs> I've heard of that. And I don't know. It's, that it's one of his newer releases. And yeah, I read it. <clears throat> it basically just taught me that your previous solve has nothing to do with your next solve and mm. like how to put that in it's just it's just an individual thing and yeah it just said like different like enjoy the challenge like uh what else like pull up the he's gonna pull it up yeah 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 probably something about like sounds like something like it's meant to be this way mm -hmm. like you know stuff oh yeah there was someone i don't remember where he saw them oh I, like at vid someone i saw someone had a tattoo that said love your fate and the idea of it is like whatever happens to you, consider it to be your fate, and like love it. Don't like be okay. obsessed of it. Yeah, obsess yeah. over it. Yeah. So the quotes I saw that like pertain to cubing: don't let the pressure exceed the pleasure. I like um, that one. I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, you don't want to be careless, but there's a benefit to caring less. Uh, there's a try time to train and a time to trust, which really helped me because dang, there were like a wait, lot these of are these are fire. When when you went. When I went to that 
final stage. There's nothing I can do but just trust what I learned. And right, just right. right. There's no like last minute just, practice. Just send gonna, it. Yeah. I just have yeah, to send just it. Just send it. And then um, allow yourself to succeed. Don't have any predetermined goals. Um, oh, this is a banger. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Okay? I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I love that one. It's basically like, uh, um, hard work always beats talent. Kind yeah. of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. something like that. To some extent, yeah. So, dang, that's crazy. Wait. To you, gotta, you gotta write a new book <laughs> with, with like, the, but these specifically the cubing now. Well, you just, like, you, like, post the same book and just replace the <laughs> shot with solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just replace, like... How to make your next solve be the best solve. <laughs> with, like, three with you main. Yeah. And then just sell it. It's not plagiarism. It's not. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like, inspirational, like, components to cubing and, like, that, too. And it could go into, like, a book form or a documentary form. Just to remind the audience, I could be wrong here, Maddie. Well, you won NAC with a 525, right? Oh no, that was. Was it a 525 average? It was 562. 562? Yeah. What was the 525? 525. So 525 was my, I think, my second round in the Northeastern Championships, which I also You're won. Right, yeah. Which, oh, okay. which would, would have been a 4, 494 without a plus two. Oh, I heard right, that. Right, that was the uh, infamous was, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah before yeah. any of us had had a 500. Because I remember you won AAC with a crazy average at the time. Like, yeah, that was, was crazy for fast. Me. That was kind of like destiny. Like, I was solving like pretty bad, but everything lined up for me. Like, my, my hand was super shaky, but for some reason, like, my turning, turning was pretty smooth. And then the fourth solve was the most crucial solve in the average because if I got a good time, I would have locked the win. And if I got a bad time, I would have a chance to like mess up really bad. And then I got a PLS get 427. So, yeah. oh wow. So that was, was the fastest. Yeah, and that locked the win. So, that was just kind of like, oh, it was meant to be. Yeah, to be the PLL gods were like smiling upon Yeah, me. they're just like, I'm not gonna give you a PLL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Works out. We always pray for that. I mean, these days, I'd imagine you'd assume so, but to break 313, it would more. But like, then again, you had, you had the 308, so. Yeah, but yeah, that, that was, was also. That was a whole scale. I guess, I guess the, yeah, the scenario was different. I would say, <laughs> oh. if you're, if it's a good T or UZD case, that could also be a possibility. Can you, at your level, I, cause every time I see you predict a PLL skip, like every time you get a PLL skip, I see you, uh, you predict it. So can you more or less predict it every time it happens, like the AUF every time it happens? Cause I don't really see most people at the top level pause ever, like ever when they get that skip. I don't think I'm hard or less. Cause that's, that's what I highlight when I commentate, for example. I highlight the importance of learning that skill. Ah, the recognizing the AUF. To recognizing the AUF and recognizing that it's a skip. The first one, yeah, but the second one gets a little bit complicated. Yeah, there's not really going through. It's so impressive to see someone stop the right after you all is done. Yeah, there's yeah. no there's yeah. no ones where I can't see it like before it happens. Really? Oh wow. Yeah. That's so cool. That is legitimately like very impressive. Yeah. You can kind of just tell. You can yeah. just tell, like yeah. blocks line up a specific. Yeah, color. you can tell, like, oh, this block's gonna stay here, and if that's color, if that color's there, then you AUF this way or whatever, you know. You just well, kind of know. That's is there ever time when you like switch your main out for an OLL and then have to like relearn? Okay, <laughs> there's what's a reason I don't learn Alex. I don't learn Alex. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, like the you have yeah. already good enough. Yeah, like I use some. Completely trash outs. Oh, oh okay. Really? All right, all right, <laughs> okay. Right. Right. You're gonna call them trash, but we're gonna be like, oh my god, that's actually so good. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I think he might be onto something. I'm very, you know, well, what? like, because he definitely does some interesting stuff. Uh, I don't know. Well, I can't even think of any. Oh wait. Okay, I'm not gonna use this cube. This is not fitting my training very well. <laughs> oh, is that mine? Yeah. yeah. That's what everyone said was bad. Like Kevin was like, this is the worst for people. Oh, mine. yours is a Gantt ball, right? Yeah, but I haven't looped it in like forever. Slightly slower. Alright, so anyway. Like, um. Like. <laughs> like this. Like, there's like a really good OLL for this. Oh, okay. I just hollered yeah, this OLL and then like a ZBLL. Oh, oh! oh okay. huh. So you do do ZB. But to some extent. To some extent. To some extent. Well, I know full TUL. 
Oh, you know Full, full T-U-L. T-U-L. Okay, interesting. T- no, he's a T U L. Oh, T U L. You know Full well, T U L. Those those are the easiest ones. Yeah. yeah, easy, but that's still a lot. I mean, like, it's a lot. I learned like I used an L like obscure L case today in my second solve, which is like the first time I ever used like good L. Wait, case. so is this what? I thought you'd just been getting PLL skips. I was uh, not even aware you've been practicing. You did that, yeah. Right. Oh. Okay. And like for this one, this there's this bar right here, uh-huh. and then these two. Uh huh. Like there's like a good out, but okay. Me and Luke Garrett, we actually just go like this, rotate, and complete the suit. Oh what? Yeah. What? Wait, do, do it again. That's a what? thing. Yeah. Uh, I definitely oh, don't. Weird. I do the one with the B B move. And then like. Uh, So Luke Garrett does that too? I might have to switch. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, mean, that, two top I, I was watching his AO100 average, I mean AO100 video, and I'm pretty sure he uses it. Oh, what yeah, this, one, this is one of the bad ones this, too. I mean, there's multiple ways I'd do it. Uh-huh. For this case, I'll probably do it this way. So okay, I, I do that, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then sometimes, like I did it, I did it twice today where I just go like this. <laughs> what? Yeah. You wrote, there's a rotation? Wait, what? Yeah, hey wait. Yeah. Is a rotation on that? Yeah, like you just... <laughs> Why does that look so fast? Yeah, that, yeah it, it just flows really well officially. It's like, it's super low TV. It's probably only like 8 TPS, but then it flows really well into like all PLLs. Cause, oh, because you just insert a pair. Yeah, you just insert a pair. If it's like a T firm, you can leave the pair out. You can cancel it. If it's a, if oh, it's a J firm, you do an F prime, you cancel it. If it's, if it's a G perm, you just do a Y, do you cancel it. If it's a, uh, if it's the other G perm, you do R two cancel. If it's a, uh, there's so many different yeah. ones. So that's like a little bit like. So I was rewatching Why We Cube last night on this TV because okay. I was just really, because like there was this like whole news that True Res had a kid, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, okay, so like True Res is like one of the main like people in Why We Cube, and Felix was narrating, and he was like, some people. I don't want to butcher the accent on this pod. Oh, okay. Some oh, people, here we go. Some people make their own luck. Or some people like <laughs> okay. make luck in art and it, it pans to Keon Mansour doing um, root mm-hmm. like super slow. Okay. And he's just like yeah. getting like a nine OH. It yeah. was like what his full record average. And it's just like that makes me think of that. Like it can create opportunity. But it's picking like maybe one we'd call an objectively worse out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it has a pair insertion that gives you continuation. And then, and then I don't know, I don't know about OLLs either. Oh, I really hear about it. Is it yeah. I think you told me you about do enough like EO before. beforehand. Yeah, and I used to know full dot I mean BLS. I used to know okay. full dot oh, okay. as well. That makes sense. And, but now I've narrowed it down to only a few cases. So yeah, I mean, for example. <laughs> <laughs> also, just the fact that just doing OLLs is insane to me because oh, because you use DZ. DZ. You use DZ. <laughs> You're saying it'll be a last, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one. This, wait, no, it's like, I forget how it is. Something like this, where it's like three corners up. Mm-hmm. Instead of just doing this and then doing that weird hole, like you just. I oh, oh, my oh, God. Oh, Sorry, so yeah, don't, don't worry about what I did, but I used <laughs> that. Yeah, don't worry yeah. about it. I, I, use, I use that case. Uh, but there aren't always cases that good. Like no, sometimes you There's one more good one. But then otherwise. That's another thing, like opening up opportunities. You can force really good OLLs in any situation. Like, let's just do a completely random solve. And I'm getting education right Yeah, right, there we go. go. Let me just set up the Figure out how to set up the problem. It's okay, I, I have the same problem. So over there. <laughs> He's oh, like there, literally. There, there, there too, go. He's too good to hunt. Yeah, yeah, he's no idea. Well, yeah, like this one. Okay. So like, I guess the basic thing is so. Just, like, I would. Just this sledge. one is so weird. I would just slap. Yeah, but right? then you have to do U two regrip Y R, oh. which I don't like doing. So, so like, you I know would, what OLL is gonna. Be I would. Right? I would do a Y D, and then like cancel into that OLL. Wait, wait, what was that? <laughs> wait, 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 w
But like, if he sleds, what OLO are you gonna get? This is a hella bad case. Well, it's gonna be a U2, F, sexy, 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 F comma, thing. So that's that's pretty good. I'll actually do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, so like that's the case where yeah, like yeah. the, the oh, default okay. is the best. So you're you're basically saying it's it's really easy to influence your OLO mm -hmm. or more than you think. Yeah, I would say. And then the only place where I would really do OLO, like dot OLLs, if 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 it's I. If I know it's a decent case and it's a join in the back. Oh, I see. Okay. Like, deorient the edges. Like, if it's like this. <laughs> so, this is a this is a decent OLO. So, and I only do it on big cubes too. Because uh -huh. I don't like doing back zooms on big cubes. It's like really tedious. Yeah. So, yeah, this one I would just go like this and then just do the OLO. Okay, so you do know the okay, dollar levels. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I learned I learned them all, but like I know like know them. <laughs> Is it kind of like how like Square Wonders who use CSP know the parody yeah. elves, but they're like ideally not supposed to use them? Like I kind of to like train my brain to just like not even try and recognize them already. Oh, oh just, like that's training, very hard to find do. something. Yeah, that's not, that is not easy. To I can do, do that, that with VLS too. Like I can purposely like not look for the OLL. And then look for the VLS. Dude, bro, just has like oh, sliders. It's like, oh, <laughs> dollar no, I was, I was, VLS off. No, no, I was literally thinking about that because if you learn parts of sets, mm -hmm. it's really hard to turn off your brain to like look at certain things. Yeah, that's why I just learn one set at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. that's like that's why I wouldn't just partially know TUL. Like I have to know full TUL. If I were uh, to learn Pi, I wouldn't go to a competition until I know full Pi. Because like you yeah, don't want to like get up high and like not be sure if like this is a case yeah. or not. So it doesn't matter too much. Probably, yeah. I can remember specific times in like Monkey League or Keeping at Home where I was still in the process of learning ZBs and that cost me one one point, which would eventually lead me to lose like the match, I guess, when I like misrecognize the ZB or something. Sure. Yeah. Right, but I guess it's better for that to happen at a Monkey League than yeah, at yeah, an actual yeah. competition. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay, so um, we're probably gonna wrap the pod soon, okay. but <laughs> I wanted to ask you a question and this is like open-ended. Mm -hmm. So like, I think a lot of the thing about cubing is getting insight into like cubers' minds is just most interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So for you, especially as an organizer and as a delegate, so like, I'm gonna ask you a pretty open-ended question. How do you really feel like cubing how do you feel like cubing should exist in like the next 10, 15 years in, in your head, like how it should be? But also like just as a pure competitor in, this is a second follow-up question. How does a, how do you define like the competition feeling like a great experience versus a, a negative experience for you? Okay, okay. So you can answer in any order, by the way. Remember, you're talking to the board, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm it's, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, for me, it's like feedback. So I'm just uh, very curious of like how you perceive keep keeping it. Yeah. So where I want it to be in ten years is, uh, I want all of ages to be doing it. I want more young kids to be doing it actually because I feel like mm. it benefits their brains. And I know for me. I'm able to keep track of like a lot more things a lot easier since I started when I was young. Like, like when I like huh. taking notes and stuff. Like huh. in school, I can take notes really slow because I'm able to memorize what the teacher is saying, like in my yeah. head. So then I just write it down, and that's very similar to like seeing an F2L pair and then like completely putting it out of your brain but still remembering where it is until you finish the pair. Oh, like, like, like a little bit in school. school. Yeah, yeah, think ahead. Yeah. 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 So that helped me out like significantly. And then um, I would like bigger competitions. I would like more competitions in auditoriums too. Like World 2019 was insanely cool. Oh, I missed that one, but I've heard it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was insane. That was probably my favorite comp ever. And then like, like the atmosphere, like yeah, when, with Nations Cup and stuff, with the people walking out in the aisles with the flags and then it was crazy because the audio term was so big and you're just focusing on one person's hands. Like, oh, like, like the entire, uh, like an enormous focus. room is focusing on It was literally a show. Yeah. It was a show. Yeah. Um, so that was, the energy was like insane. So 
more auditoriums of like this competition. This competition was cool. Right, it was in an auditorium. And like, uh, hmm. people, people need to start getting more calculated with their practicing style and their their turning styles, their algorithms, their whole technique. Yi Heng, Yi Heng and Yi Heng's team are kind of tapping into it in its early stages, but like in the end, they have to be very calculated if they want to even compete at this level. Because I think probably us are like the last generation of really intuitive viewers. That's so like, really. Oh, really are you really thinking like? Whoa, kind of, that's actually okay. Like more uh, like a structured like practice schedules where it's like yeah, okay, practice, these days practice focus schedules. On. Uh, it like drills? Really drilling your turning, working on individual things. Okay, so Yi Heng, Yi Heng is Yi Heng's mom is super intense on his his turning and his finger tricks. Where his hand plate finger placement is, he's very particular on like when he's doing like a T burn or something, where his pointer is throughout the whole alg every single turn. So that's kind of tapping into it, which is which is allowed him to like have this TPS that he does. But like you know like. I like don't even care about that. <laughs> and right now, in the future, it's like a micro optimization. Yeah. yeah. So you need to do that, and also Alex, like Bo Fan Zhang. I'm good friends with him, and he is just crazy on ZBs and oh, ZBLS. He's the and stuff. kid that just knows every ZB. Yeah. Like, I just he was the kid I saw in Worlds. Just and he's such a tiny kid. Yeah, wait, too. Is he even younger than Yi Hang? Yeah, he's like seven Yi Hangs now. Oh, oh my god. The two six year olds that just came out. Oh, like the CCS. Yeah, tall. the siblings, they, they know full ZB as well. So that's where oh, keeping man. is going. You mean the 400 plus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I was sort of thinking, like, like in schools, like, we learn like, like these vocab lists. Like, every week, like, here's 10 new words. Like, must be how. Yeah, yeah, yeah imagine it's like it, yeah. every week, like, you get these like 10 ZBLs as your homework to get these in your head. Yeah, so, so that's how they're going to do it in the future which it would be good because then we'll have closer competitions actually because we're getting to, once we get to the point where like getting world records is arbitrary and it won't happen anymore that's when cubing will get interesting i feel like oh. when, when it's more about like the championships that are yeah. like that's the inverse of how a lot of people think. yeah I, like it'll that's get boring because a lot of people say cubing will die because right? you know oh, like yeah. okay literally Golf, right? <laughs> yes, I yeah. love this. Okay, I love okay. this. I love this. Like in the early stages of golf in Scotland, you know there are people who are like, let me get the world record lowest round today, you know? <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. Let me shoot a 59. And then once people started doing that, you can't get like a you can't get a 49. No, so it's like, right, oh, right, why right. don't we start making tournaments? Why don't we start winning these tournaments and betting money and like winning money from these tournaments? Oh it's God, not, it's not, is right. It's not about your. Right. It's not about your record score. It's about the score that you put up against other people, which I think is the direction cubing will go and should go. Is that we're in a we're in a crazy time where there's going to be only a few world records left to be broken, especially in three by three. I feel like it's going to be years before they. Can oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were talking about it. It'll take a very yeah. special, special solve, last layer skip. Yeah, something just insane. In 10 years, that will, that will be what it takes. Yeah. And then, I think there, there should be more money put into these championship prize pools too. Oh, yeah. Those are, yeah, totally. Those are going to be crazy valuable for people because that will be what they train for. They don't train to get world records. They'll train to get PRs, but records... I don't think will matter as much as titles. They're training to get right. PRs to win the tournaments that they go uh -huh. to. Right. Like that, right. the fixation is not on, the fixation for the Cuber has probably always been towards yeah. like records. And what I think yeah. about is world records are temporary. They will be broken at some point, but championships will never be taken away from me. I will always be three times Japan champion. I right. will never, if I get the 3x3 world record average, I will never always be the 3x3 world record average holder. Do you know, right. I'm thinking of a Kobe quote. Do you guys know what Kobe quote I'm talking about? No. Okay, so he said, um, emotions are fleeting, banners last forever. Uh, oh, I see. So, like, so like, championships yeah. is a banner that lasts yeah. forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that's, like my parents have been talking about that to me too, like how I should think about it. Because my dad was like a golfer. <laughs> he was, uh, oh, oh my god. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> so I see where you're going. He's a big golfer. 
and golfers are all into championships, so. Makes sense. Me and my parents, our philosophy is like, we need to get wins. And Man. I feel sad, I feel more satisfied when I get a win like today than when I get a PR average, PR. I would say. Man, dude, if you if you all ever need like a gourmet meal, send this guy in the kitchen, dude. He's cooking <laughs> dude, he's fire! Cooking. That was a great, was, that was, was a like great insane. answer. Amazing, yeah, absolutely amazing. That was a great answer. Like it's like little tidbits, like this is the last generation of intuitive cubers. Yeah, that's that's yeah. insane. What, that a, what a quote never, of a line. I would never, ever, ever said that. <laughs> yeah. Ever, but it's kind of. I think it, yeah, it, it is true. It's like I think people used to be able to get fast just based on like, oh, this is a fun hobby I want to practice for the fun of it. Right. But like, that's not true for any other sport. Like, you can't become like the yeah. best swimmer just by like swimming in your home pool because it's fun. Yeah. All right, one last thing. So that only applies to if you're trying to push human limits, push pushable records, championships. Will definitely be half calculations, half champion mentality. Yeah, I was, I was no, I, I, I like there so. are some people who have innate abilities to win, like Max Park, for example. He's a winner, right? Mm -hmm. Max Park's a winner. He is a winner. You know, the World Championships, everything was going against him. He lost seven, six by six. He lost right. OH. He lost four by four. He lost five by five. Nothing was going for him, and he wins three by three. Right. In you, clutch fashion. Yeah. So yes, that's a, that's a great point. Like winner's mentality. Max had to learn how to win. <laughs> yeah. Because like yeah. the thing is like twenty, and this is like we were talking about Felix and Max, right? So Felix yeah. was a back-to-back -back world champion. Yes. yes. But before that, he was the favorite. And he yeah. Lost. And he lost. Yeah. And Everybody he has that thing. Like for yeah. me, I feel like for me that was Canadian championships. I won all three. First rounds, and I first, and I like bombed the finals, which yeah. taught me valuable lessons, which I almost put into succession in Madison Worlds. It didn't all pan out, but I feel, I feel like I put my all into those championships, and you did very like yeah. at the end of the day. I think you placed like fifth or sixth. Yeah, but I you did in Worlds, which was I was pretty happy with a very decent average at the yeah. end of the day. So like everybody has those, but Max, he's crazy because like. Like he's not the most technical guy. He makes mistakes, but when he needs to, he when he needs to do well, like I would say his the most impossible metric to measure is like clutch. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. totally. His totally. his clutch stats are insane. Like yeah. yeah, like I've been watching him. He was at my like first or second ever competition in 2017, in I think it was California. 2017 that or something. sounds familiar okay. i feel like yeah so that, i was averaging like tens and that was when he was just bursting out the scene before he won his world championship so that was like and ever since then like he just wins and you know it may not look like it but he just gets it done and i think that will be what people need and that's not necessarily something you can learn either which is gonna put talent into play in it makes sense it's, it's the intangible right like yeah. if you ever play madden there's always the intangible factor mm -hmm. right so like, and it's a good point. I, like, I don't think he's gonna watch this, right? Like at the end of the day, like there's <laughs> probably too many. Translated. Yeah, like, I mean, like on top of that, like there's VPN, you have to worry about that. But for Yi Hang, like in this world championships, you have to remember, you're never done learning how to be better, how to be clutch because yeah. Max, even he was a world champion, right? In 2019, that's the first thing I thought of. And that's why it was so emotional for me as a person to see him succeed this past mm -hmm. year is because in 2019, it didn't go right. Yeah, right. 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 Oh, that's right. He had to wait four years. Yeah, and he hangs nine. Like, even though if he doesn't win the next one, he'll exactly. win one eventually. It's yeah. always if like just, if stay just persistent. With yeah. Stick with it. Just eventually, it will go your way. And I think, yeah, like, I didn't break my PR for a year, and then I broke it at Worlds. Like I just had to keep coming back, and then eventually it'll break. It. Same with Yihang. He'll do some. He'll do good stuff in the future. If people learn that, then they will. They will. Okay, okay. One last, one last. Thing. No, no, no. no you're yeah, good. Yeah. We're dropping gems. So here. like, <clears throat> we're in a transitional period. <laughs> Yi Hang was dominating the last pretty much year until Worlds happened. Yeah. And sure. then the Gan Super League happened, and now his domination is gone. Okay. So now we're in a transitional period. Somebody is gonna step up and become the next dominant figure. Whether it's gonna be Timon, Max, me, Yi Hang, Ru Hang. I have, I have faith in Ru Hang as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah. like that will happen. The dominant figure will go away. 
transitional period happens, Dominant Fair comes back by the time Worlds happens. And that guy is gonna win Worlds, I think. They're gonna have a mm. yeah. It's gonna be a dip and a rise. It's yeah. gonna be and a rise. That's that's what's crazy about cubing, like <clears throat> like Max Park is literally the world champion. I came in six of the world championship and I beat him today. And like Man. he hang he hang was by far the best three by three solve in the world and he lost at worlds. Like at this level, it's anybody's game. So in the future in the future, their coaches and their their team have to have to put in their heads that like you're gonna go through failures, and if you learn more than the next guy who has a failure, then you're gonna beat him the next time you guys go against each other. So yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> like I feel like we'll never have an era like Felix in like the mid 2010s. It's where he's, always like, a gonna be shifting. Second it's gonna maybe. Maybe for like, you know, six months, six there's gonna months. be somebody who like breaks world record like twice in a row, like Yi Hang did. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, again, Super League and World Champs is gonna happen and it all changes. Like, it's not, Felix, Felix was in the perfect time where he was like insanely good, plus he was in a long transitional period where he had to step up and then he retained that for like years, yeah. right? And then Max is was like that for big cubes. Honestly, I don't think he's there anymore. Maybe in seven by seven, maybe almost in five by five, but people are catching up yeah. fast. Yeah. Especially in every event. World Championships 2025 is gonna be crazy. It's like, gonna yeah. be nuts. Yeah. It might be nuts in the sense that like there might be like names you've never seen before. I know. Yeah. Like, I and mean, there's two whole years, right? I feel like the Chinese are raising a big few <laughs> legend. I, I know. Say. I think. Ah, interesting. Yeah. That's true, because like, a lot of the like the Chinese prodigies are always only three by three. Yeah. So. And that's the thing, like, I was talking to Lucas Shelley, who's good friends with all the Chinese community, and he said their coaches make them train what's popular in China. And so 3x3 was popular, so they're training 3x3. And then Yi Hang switched to 2x2 on Pyramix, because that was popular as well. But then there's going to be some coach that's like, you know what, let me make this kid good at big cubes. And yeah, then, yeah, and then like Max Tark won't have his 2025 comes, you know. I'm so caught on to the scene. One, one thirty-five, seven by seven. I mean, I don't know. Something. Yeah, it's happens. gonna be scary. Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be scary. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a sight to see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Twenty twenty-five. Speaking of worlds is in Seattle, boys. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have no reason not to one, go. If it's one flight. It is one flight from Hawaii. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That would be one of the not Jesus. cheaper competitions, but closest yeah. competition we've gone to. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. Mm -hmm. God, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah, I can't imagine what the the landscape's gonna look like. Like. So many. I feel like there'll be like way more Chinese names. Yeah, and then I feel like two months it will be dominated by Chinese. It's, it's turning base, and that's the main part oh, of the training is turning. Yeah, I remember like before Zayn Kanani like showed up, I, I felt like oh two two is already optimized and like it can't get any faster. No, <laughs> but like, it is. Then it he is. proved that like you know like people were just not turning at the maximum speed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like if he can do it just like as a one man team, what can people do if they have coaches and like a whole gan guru thing set up? Yeah, it's I, I like I like the transitional thing. I think it is like a very transitional phase from phase for keeping in. I think we're living in the we're living in like a really good it's this is like kinda of like a meme, right? It's like where we didn't live to see like the adventure of the Rubik's Cube. Oh, we're not gonna live yeah, to yeah. see like the cube go to like Mars or anything. Yeah. But we're living in like the moment. Yeah. And this yeah. is like a really, really interesting moment to be in the scene. So. Yeah. And as people get better, other people will get better as well. Like for me, yeah. I would be averaging, honestly, if Max Park didn't exist, I'll be averaging seven or eight seconds right now. It's only because of Max. It's only because of the fact that I went to all of his competitions. I saw him beating me by like three seconds all my <laughs> career that I'm like, yeah, yeah it's the fire in the belly. Like, yeah. Let me, yeah. Let me, exactly. let me like, try. Let me try. This is my seven comp second competition. I've been just been getting destroyed by Max. So I'm like, <laughs> that pushed me. That's why I'm where I am. And that's why, Okay, perfect example, Samir and Max Shaw square one. Mm. Oh yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, they, oh, just, like, yeah. they go back each other over and over. Yeah. And that's why they're so fast. So I feel like that's what's good in China. They have cubing teams and mm. and all of them are very good friends and like they all push each other. So they're all gonna rise together, I would say. Yeah. They're already starting to rise, but it's gonna be crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy, yeah. yeah. You guys heard it here first. The cubing, it's the revolution. I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a revolution. I, you know what? This is this is great because like, is there so much like?
technical insight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. Like, especially with the OLL and, and <laughs> dot OLL stuff that you showed us. Yeah. And then like, obviously they're gonna be really good, but there's also gonna be someone, this is gonna be the one who's like intuitive, but he just knows how to win, like Max. Yeah. You know, right. he, there's yeah. always gonna be somebody like that. And you can't take that away because somebody's always gonna figure, just figure out how to win. And, and yeah, you can train no matter how much you want. This is my final thing for the future generation. You can train, you can practice outs, you can drill TPS, you can just do a thousand solves a day. But when you need to do one good solve, you just have to be able to do it. And you, and you yeah. just have to learn how to do that. Like 1000 solves practice, you can't put that onto one solve. You just have to learn how to do one good solve. Which is what it comes down to usually. Like he hangs 6.7. He needs a 6 0 to win the world championship. Right. That's that's what he's gonna learn how to do that solve next time. Yeah. 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 I think that's like, I think that's the, the best way to close it out. Like focusing on just that, that one was, solve. That was yeah. 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 One solve to, that's what world championships came to this year. One solve. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, truly. Like it, yeah, it came. It was like so fast because like you watch it live. Like Ray Hong is going. Yeah. And then like something Yi Hang is going to, and then. It's, a, it's done. It's time for a war. And yeah, that's why I always had a good self today. What I learned is, for me, I feel better. Ooh, I don't have. Okay, I'll repeat well, it. Well, no, well, we can do it off. No, no, no. Okay. So, like, <laughs> I've been to so many championships. I've won many. I've lost many. The worst I've felt is when I've tried not to mess up and then I messed up. And then that's what cost me the loss. Rather than mm. if I gave it my all, I sent it, and then I messed up. I'm like, oh well. But then I feel heavy feelings of regret when I try not to lock up, try to make it perfect, and then it doesn't work it's out. It's kind of like, I guess, like putting the mental energy into it, and yeah. then if it doesn't turn out properly. Yeah. yeah. Rather than just sending it, like, North American Championships, like, I don't know what I was thinking. I just, like, did some weird solutions, but I was just having fun. And just sent it, and I ended up coming out on top. That was a clean. Call. Yeah, yeah. They maybe it's like focusing on like your skills rather yeah. than like Same your like, pitfalls. Like U.S. Nationals, like I, I completely like failed for myself, but I was having fun, and I just gave it my all, full, full effort of TPS, like no holding back. So I was like, oh well, you know, it was a good yeah. comp. It was a good comp. I gave it my all. Max came out on top. Same with Worlds too. Like that final solve was the 472 was like the epitome of my solving style like you just have fun and things can happen like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. awesome well that's a good quote to end it on yeah we should definitely definitely wrap it up wow i i feel so much smarter <laughs> i don't feel yeah. just smarter i feel inspired inspired enlightened and motivated you know obviously i'm not looking to be that type of keyword but uh <laughs> i mean i feel inspired that this is what we're cultivating mm-hmm. yeah even as a spectator i think i think it's epic so thank you for your wise words, Maddie. Yeah. That was no that was fantastic. No I'm definitely gonna simmer on this. <laughs> so as a formality, yeah. obviously, um, you have more people. But what what's on your Instagram? What's your social? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But like it's, yeah. A, it's a, like it's Cam, that for, for whatever reason you're following us, but not him, which is doesn't make it. It sense. actually doesn't. Like Cuban Jedi, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, pretty much everything. That's me. Uh, please follow my Instagram. Get me to 40,000 followers. Yeah. Ooh. 40,000? Yeah. I'm at 39.5, I think. Oh my Ooh. god. By the time this comes out, I might be there. So maybe ask for 50. If there's one of you guys that's following us, but not him. So oh, no, the, yeah, yeah. the Keeping Jedi, mm-hmm. go follow it now. It's exactly how it sounds. Star yeah. Wars. So. So there's a whole story about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. All Thanks right. for coming on, man. Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Maddie. Yeah, awesome. So cool. Awesome. So good. So Wait, good. so how? What, what does it do? The music turned out? I so don't know. It just fades. But how do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>